Today's first speaker, Ping Lim, is a rose hybridizer for Altman plants who has developed a new generation of roses for gardens that are easy to grow and are disease resistant. Ping is presenting a program on rose hybridizing in today's world and will include a video from YouTube that Ping has asked to be played during his program time. Ping has signed a speaker consent form for the Sierra Foothill Rose Society. Ping, are you ready to go? Hi, Ping. You have to unmute, Ping. Ping, you, you need to unmute. Uh, you're still muted, Ping. Let's see if I can help you. Click the little icon that looks like a microphone. Uh, it's down at the bottom, usually. Yeah, yeah I think. I now think you're I'm, on mute. There you go. Good. Uh, after I, I listened to Sus Susan's talk about miniature, I have one miniature I want to put into my PowerPoint. <laughs> so <laughs> give me one minute. I'll add in. All right, Ping's going to talk to us about rose hybridizing in today's world. Okay. Okay, now I have to share the screen, right? Yes, sir. How to do that? Share screen. Here it comes. There you are. Yeah, I just add in one picture. So, okay. Uh, my talk today actually is the hybridizing rose for for today's world. Actually, for today, tomorrow, for the future, and then when we start this. Uh, new roles for today or for the future, we have to know what's in the past, what we have in the past and what we, somebody already done a lot hybridizing in the past. So we can go ahead and advance. So right now there is a lot of roles around the world. And I don't know, you guys might know how many roles already available in the world. Modern rose 12 leaves more than 40,000 roses. Why we need another roses? How to, how to make my screen full screen? I like to do full screen. Okay. Uh, everybody have some thought about roses and why we people in the world love roses. We try to understand. And we start with Mr. Shakespeare. He always said, rose is the best. Why rose is the best? And 500 years ago, what kind of rose we have? How many color we have? And why rose so significant in the last uh, 500 years during Shakespeare's time. If you study it, you know because rose have fragrance. That rose fragrance really trickle a lot of people the way they love roses. And then after that, we get a lot of color embalming on roses in form, different kind of form, different kind of fragrance. There is a more than 19 different fragrance that in the rose that they analyze and longer blooming season. That means that rose can bloom year round, like especially in the Southern California and blooming year round, repeat blooming. Not any other flower have that kind of quality and ability to keep blooming. After you cut, you dead it, it come it again. And wires, Wide selection, you name it. You almost have every kind of rose, ground cover, 
climber, miniature, mini flora, flora banda, grandiflora, shrub, and then there's a cut and show too. There is not so many flowers you can cut and participate for the show, participation, competition, and the most diversity plant. That means the rose can grow in the north and can grow in the south, can grow in the west, and it is all over. Around the world, actually, roses. And then it can also can be shipped around the world also. That's a big business in the flower. Cost effectiveness. So when you grow rose, you can enjoy years after years. I, I still have my love and peace more than 25 years in my backyard. So you know how long that rose can be last. And I also see some rose last for 60 years. The Queen Elizabeth that I saw that in China, it become a tree. And heritage, some people, family, carry over their heritage by roses. Like the father, the mother carry to the son and daughter, the grand, grandparent carry to their grandson, that happened. And historical significance, there is a lot of story to talk about and food. Rose is also for food, not only medicine, also can be eat, can be drink. And there is plenty of uh, vitamin C. And when you combine the, rose, the food with rose, you amaze people that way. And the rose contain the vitamin C, not only good for the people and also good for the wildlife as well. Just love it. Some people just love roses. It doesn't matter what's any kind of meaning. And rose have a lot of nations become their national sim symbol. American is one of them in 1986. President Reagan announced that Ameri rose is American flower. And very interesting, why select rose is not the other one? I understand the computation that is petunia, marigold, and also the corn, the corn years. They want to select the corn for the American flower. I think rose is better. <laughs> and romance, obviously, very important. That romance only in people that we have, we know romance, and we value romance between the loved one. And rose is a very good, can represent your love romance into the other party. And it carry over from generation and generation. And when we want to really revolution rose, we, we need to know the evolution of the modern rose, how they come and what kind of background we have and what can we do with, how can, can we uh, double, compound those design genes to the future roses. So what kind of problem today we are facing that we need to overcome? That so if you look at this chart, it's quite complicated, but however, you can see all the historical genetics uh, species that involve in modern yeah, roses. So, so we talk about today hybrid tea. What, what, what so yeah okay uh, so you can see this hybrid tea here that really is uh, in, involved in uh, a lot of Chinese foods and also Western roses that can make to hybrid tea. Okay, the evil rose and rose. So if you, if we, we want to make the rose different than the past, what kind of different we, we have to make? So, for instance, before, before, somebody bothered me with the, yeah. You see, Ella, okay. So before, before, before Chris time that Rosa Carica used as medicine. So, and then after that, Damas coming, we using as the rose oil, the fragrance. And then after that, 
1750 let tea rolls from China. And they value as the repeat and the form, they are high center form. And it, it, it have a table to be repeat. And in the 19th century start that we have old garden rolls at high, high bread perpetual. And we vary the repeat roaming, the form and the fragrance is combined. And actually one more you can be add is a hardiness. So we, you combine the Eastern China rolls and European rolls, it, it's hardier than the Chinese rolls. And then in 1876, La France is coming. So we really love their form and repeat blooming. So that is the, the evolution of start from 1876. So from there, you can see the, uh, we have some uh, for a Banda miniature coming in during that time. And all is really everything have to be repeat. If your rows not repeat, it not mean much to the modern rose breeding at all. You can see that. And then the form had to retain that high center form to make it rose look like roses. And also you have to see more flower, the massive of flower. And now we have hybrid tea. We also need the, the grandiflora, the, the bigger, the bigger flower. And then after in the in the 60, 1960, the iceberg is merged. It becomes phenomenon uh, effect to the shrub. Not only we repeat, and also massive of blooming. And simplicity with the bigger flower. And um, and uh, you, you can see, and after that, the, in the 1980, David Austin, he believed if you can breed old fashioned rose with fragrance and with repeat, it will become, will become fashion. So David Austin today, after 40 years, everybody loved rose, no David Austin rose. And then in 885, Millie Land, Bonica so up and it, it just took off the whole shrub rose and flower carpet, knockout, easy arrogant drip. And now he'll tell me that novelty and he'll tell me also need to be repeat novelty. And now in the 80s. So we can keep on going. We need what we want today. I think there is a last one. After this year, I think we all need repeat blooming favorites larger flower and a uh, quicker cycle. And all this, we need to have the shade tolerance. I will show you the chart, the, the, the chart that I make up. So the rose is really more than fragrance. They have hybrid grandifora for a banana miniature, kind of shrub, all these species. So uh, only rose can make a garden. You don't need any other flower really because they have all kinds. So you see the color, the flower, the form, the fragrance, and the challenging facts that we are facing today. The first is the weather is unpredictable, and special in the zone five, zone four, zone five area, that the Chicago, uh, New England area, the wind chill, the stress from the soil, hot and cold, and the disease, not only black spot, mildew, and now we have rosette and insect. How about today we, when we hear chili trip, it scares. In the, in the cooler zone, the Japanese beetle, they eat up the whole things. And animal, we have deer, rabbits, <laughs> climbing rat, environmental officer. <laughs> also, what, you, what chemical you use. So today, a lot of chemical we cannot use in the United States. And living space, our living space getting smaller and smaller, limited. And social responsibility, the humanity also involving in uh, today's, if you want to enjoy rose, you should consider that rose not poison to our environment. So people in touch with rose should be happy, healthy, not to get involved in chemical production. So, you know what is this chili trip? And you, you see that they eat up the whole things. <laughs> and how about this uh, 
Proceed. The spider mites that really float in, in the air. It can, it can go anywhere they want to. So this is a very scary uh, disease that we are facing today is a rosette. It can kill the whole acre in overnight. How about Japanese beetle? How about horse? Also eat the, the, the rose too, the rat, the rabbit. You know, on the climbing rat, when we're breeding roses that a lot of hips, the rat is really go up there and eat the hip. You not even see the seedling yet. So in the Northern people, they're also facing the deer. The deer really love roses. So let's start to raising the dog, to chasing the deer, chasing the rabbit away or the horse away. But you have to know what kind of dog you need to spend. Eventually, this dog have a lot of breath, but I think he might have eat roses too. So, beside the animal, you can see our, our United States, in the United States, what problem we are facing year after year. It's a drought, not enough water, too hot. So, uh, we are lucky we, uh, we live in San Diego. This area is one of the best areas. We do we not really have that kind of problem. But we also have the shortage of the water. We cannot rely on the rain that much. In the Southern California, it's seldom rain. And uh, this environmental problem is keep on going. It's not stopped today. It, it, get, it will get worse. So what we want, Rose, is we want rose hardy. We have a lot of color, compact, novelty, fragrant, repeat and repeat blooming, low growth, mass of bloom, easy to grow, big and bigger, disease resistant, easy to root, set tolerant. So that's all we need in one rose. So that is our future role. We have to combine all this together. Can we get it? This really not just beautiful. It's lasting beauty and it, it, it is a beyond beauty. So my work and a lot of rose breeders work and really want to combine this puzzle together as one piece. So if you miss the system, you, you miss the whole thing really. Now you have to add all this together, how to do that. So we have to search in a lot of genetic material that can carry all this gene. And then hopefully we can combine all together to make the rose have this in, internal, in, internal energy we call chi. So with the chi inside the plant, they can make the flower, make, they can make the rose repeat and repeat blooming. And they can have fragrance because of plenty energy inside the plant. They can produce lots of flower. They can, re they can protect from disease, protect from the stress of the weather or the soil. So we have to searching for the genetic. First thing we have to know why our modern garden rose lost fragrance. Now, since 2020, 2020 I think we start to realize the fragrance have to be coming back. So the, the future trend, actually, the rose have to be fragrant. The rose without fragrant is really uh, not make people disappoint when they get rose without fragrance. So I, I, I searching around the world, try to find where is the fragrant source of roses. So I even go to Turkey for the rose oils farm to visit their collecting the mass rose for the fragrance, how they collect and how many rows can make a, 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 an ounce of oil and how they're going to improve it. What is the breeding behind it? And here is the genetic, uh, uh, the trends of fragrance. Uh, in general, people's nose can smell this uh, seven fragrance uh, easily. I, I might be only can smell uh, four or five, not, not more than seven. So some people can do all those. So 
you can see that David Austin come out with the. Normally, we know when we're talking about David Austin rose, we will talk double, very multiple bloom, the fragrant on it. But it is a single rose with a lot of fragrance and very nice. And it released uh, last year. And Tom also come out with fragrance roses and even in, won the fragrant award from American Rose uh, Garden Rose selection. And with his Hutermia also smells so good. And even novelty striped roses, the Panther series, and also have fragrance. So you can see since uh, 2020, all the roses have to be fragrance. Intensive fragrance, this multiple color. And this guy, I want to talk to you about this uh, sweet spirit. And it, it, it won so many awards. It combined the healthy, the fragrant, disease, resistant, big flower, hybrid tea, and all together. This is the ceiling of knockout combined with ERA, the French rose, and it uh, come out from Mayon family. And yesterday, it won uh, American Rose Center, the best rose award, the gold medals. So this one is announced yesterday, just come out from the oven. And actually last year, it won American AGRS Fragrance Award as well. This is a breakthrough for Modern Rose breeding program. I think this sweet uh, spirit is one of one of very uh, pioneer in this area. And it introduced in the United States actually last year, this year, and it patterned in 2019. How about Hilthermia? Look at that. This is from my friend, Chris Warner. He, he, he started breeding this Hilthermia for a long time. This is the one I really like it. <laughs> And he had many of them. And also Modern Rose, beside fragrant, beside uh, a lot of flower, bigger flower, and also the form, like wave, like cut, right ruffle. Sweet spot. And Peter Elsing do a lot of this kind of work in Holland. How about Blue Rose? I have a chance, actually, a couple of years ago, I visited Suntory, their research center in nearby uh, Nara, uh, Osaka area. And then I have a chance to talk to the breeder and ask him what's the, what's the future, what, what's the next of this blue rose. He said this blue rose is not really blue. I agree with him. And it's more lavender. It only blue when it fades. When they are fed, the blue colors really show up, just like Rhapsody in blue. And there is a lot of novelty. Light is a green rose I want to show you. The green is a really green. And uh, the black rose, hope they discover in China. And you can see the combination of the novelty color, ketchup and master. And a lot of different types of the forage that we can use. Glossy, light green, dark, small, all kind. That is really our resource for our breeding. So, and budded and old wood, right now uh, the, the, the trend of modern rose it go into the own root is more and more than budding because the budding, it takes a lot of time. The cost effect, the own root will be a lot more cost effect and can avoid, especially in the Northern part country, you can avoid the understock 
uh, the sucker coming out from the ground. So you grow the you grow yellow rose next year, it, it become a red rose, like Dr. Huey. <laughs> It's quite popular in the north because of understock. And outbreeding program that I moved from Oregon to uh, to take advantage of the San Diego, the weather. Uh, we can we can uh, select rows almost year round, and we can propagate almost year round as well. So our program start in 2012, and uh, normally we do about 30,000 cross. We have 300,000 seed. And company only asks for uh, three to five variety each year. So you can see the, how significant the, the, the discard rate. And we test, we're testing our uh, roses in uh, many, many places in, uh, in our company internal. Uh, you know, almond rose, Altman company right now become one of the world largest, uh, United States largest nursery uh, from California to Florida. We, we all have the facility. So we use it, we take advantage of the facility. We test all our roles around internally. So you can see this liver side in the desert without any chemical involved. There is no insecticide, fungicide, or any side. And then we laid, we laid the, the rows in the field that way for three years, minimum of three years in the ground and also in the container. If the rows not growing, they die, they die, only survival leave. And we also compare our rows with other varieties, especially in the rosette. You can see the rosette in knockout. And this is our rose is true passion next to it. It seems to be clean. So far. And that's all that's all in Florida. And that's our uh, our our agent testing our roles in New England, Massachusetts area. So from the north to the south, very north to the very south, the performance have to be equally good. So you can see our roles has been tested in the container in Florida and grow in the ground in New England's area. It looked good. And we participate international competition as well. So we have won quite a few awards uh, for the special for the American Rose sub, uh, try for substantial. We got quite a few master award, and this is the latest award for true passion. And uh, we create when we come when I come to California, we create uh, a rose. A, a series we call True Broom series, like Easy Arrogant uh, for Bailey and True Broom for Altman. And good promotion on the True Broom few, few years ago in 2018. And then a lot of report about roses, uh, including Russia, American, obviously, and Holland and Sweden, Polish. If you go to the uh, in uh, Google, it, you can find many different languages talking about easy arrogant and true true broom. And they said the magic from America is that they, special. This word actually is from a Russian uh, in interview. They they have our testing in Moscow or North uh, Russia, and they all they all coming back. They don't have die back. So they're wondering why this road not die in that cold and harsh condition. And also in Japan, they in the summer is very hot and humid. A lot of roads go dormant. They call heat dormant in the summertime. There is no broom. But our roads, especially the red captain, is broom like crazy. So they start to, to, to say about 
that is a magic from America. And we have to test in many different kind of region and many different kind of organization, including university and earth kind roses. And then I received this letter a few years ago. Mark, uh, he write me about, he had been test uh, rose without spray for 12 years. And he had more than, uh, growing more than 857 roses. And he write me this letter. He said, my rose doing good. Like especially the golden eye, Casimir and my girl is performing so good without chemicals and they're still performing. And this give the world another choice of better roles. And that is our new, new roles called True Broom. And True Broom, normally we want our roles have more than 25 petals. The roles look like roses. <laughs> So it's supposed to be have many petals and looks nice. And tuberum rose, low maintenance, easy to growth, disease resistant, is not option, compact, repeat blooming, mass of bloom. And now we have to add the effort to fragrances, bigger flower, more color range, lasting longer, easy to root and earlier bloom. So, before we introduce our roses, we got the award before in introduction that helped. So this is a true passion. I first call, my nickname is called Double Ten and it's really pick it up right now. So, so fashion. So the American nursery magazine even using as the front cover. And Frying Kiss is another fragrance mess of room and the the commercial name called true gratitude and this is combined healthy fragrant and mess of room and bigger flower and it's a climber in california in oregon still a, a shrub in the cooler zone is a shrub and this interesting rose i call nickname is called formosa that's the place that i i was educated from and it true inspiration, they have more than 50 petals drop clean. You don't see any mummy inside the plant. You can see this is uh, the field that we have in Vista. That's our testing field that we have display to our customer. And that is our patent. Uh, we patent that it's called Lim Formosa. And this another our winner called Gomai now become true friendship and is a fragrant. It won the Rose Hill and very easy to root. Normally yellow rose is not easy to root. And this is our champion for uh, 20, 21, 22. It had won so many awards and uh, in United States, we call true love. Outside United States, we call red captains. So we compare the our true love or red captain with uh, Patik knockout side by side. You can see the flower side, the pot side, the forage side, and all those we compare with the best in the in uh, in the in uh, in the industry right now. And it, 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 win, it won six awards from, <laughs> from Japan and seven actually, and then won AGRS. And now we get another award from uh, ARS, ARC, ARC, American Rose Center. It just came out yesterday. So this Lion King is another fragrance, uh, a fragrant, uh, healthy rose. I consider this is another breakthrough for our breeding uh, program that combine all the fragrant, bigger flower and healthy. And this is my miniature will be in the market in two years. Hopefully next year we have more regional. Uh, it's a more cloud cover type of uh, miniature and stripe and no touch of disease and it roots so easy for feel prolific 
it covered the ground. And our new one, Tropica, and it won this year is American Rose Selection Award. And you can see the broom. It, it very assembly Tropicana, but you see how many broom they have and grow in the container, three garden container, about 20 to 30 broom in that container. You see the whole, whole, the whole field, the whole field. And this is our new, very new, and just one, yesterday won American Rose Center Award for the best upright shrub. Lady first. And uh, the commercial name we call True Perfume. And our True Broom, we have come with the container with all the special container make and all the label we have and with the, with the description of the rose and also the care. And Home Depot and Lowe, you can buy from Home Depot and Lowe and with all the Synergy Group as well. Garden Center. And all the True Broom is own wood. And this is the one, you see this, only three weeks old. That's all, the whole pad of the, uh, the frying keys. And Synergy is one of the, the, garden, the garden center franchising, uh, special in the East Coast area. I think they have more than 2,000 garden center involved in their plant distribution. So very interesting that two competitions sell the same roses. Uh, we are so happy that we can, uh, we can provide to both a store to sell our roses, the true bloom. So you can, especially in the West Coast, it's quite easy to, to see the true bloom rose in the Home Depot and Low. And you can see the mark, the flower mark out here is my role distributes distribution around the world like this with easy arrogant. And then hopefully in the future, the true room will be there too. And beside rose, I also doing acapentus and hibiscus. What's the of our acapentus? Our acapentus about about 10 to 12 inches just like tulips, but with more than 100 broom. So you can see that is the one, uh, we already patterned this rose, uh, this agapenthus called atomic broom. It's very small, compact, but it broom like atomic blossom. And our hibiscus. You know, as a rose breeder, try to breed hibiscus, I imagine if I can come with the hibiscus, look like roses. And this is our first release. And we already have nine varieties in the market. Mother's Day, we're launching Sunscape in low. You can, you can pick up uh, our hibiscus in low. For Prettier Tomorrow, it's not a dream. It's the mission of our team. I want to thank you, everybody. Give me a chance to talk about Rose today. And I have a, a, a YouTube, a very short YouTube, about three to four minutes, talk about my, my Rose, the tribe in uh, Pennsylvania air, area. So hopefully, uh, uh, Gary can help me uh, focus that uh, uh, YouTube. Gary? Thank you for joining us here at Overly Vast Nurseries on a beautiful sunny morning in early summer. And here on the nursery where we grow a very wide selection of outdoor garden plants, it's a pleasure to be able to take you into the nursery and to show you some of the plants that we have earmarked as being particularly good for 
performers for this region. That's the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states. And if you'd like to be able to find out more about all the plants that we grow, I'd like to suggest that you think about clicking and subscribing to this channel because then as we post new videos from our nursery, you'll be able to then get them automatically in your feed and perhaps then look for them through our network of garden centers that are located widely throughout our region. Now, if you've been watching any of the other videos on our channel, you'll probably have noticed that we've got quite a few roses on there because that's something that we really find a lot of interest nowadays, particularly ones that are good, hardy ones that perform well in our landscape, but particularly ones that don't require a lot of maintenance and with that in mind certainly spraying for diseases. Now we over the years have been testing lots of varieties over 200 different varieties have been uh, scheduled in our trials and out of that we picked the ones that are really good performers and this morning I'm excited to be able to show you this relatively new introduction from the True Bloom series of roses. This is True Bloom True Sincerity an exciting short compact growing one that as you see is absolutely breathtaking with all of its rich color on these large multicolored flowers. This is one that's been bred by Ping Lim from Altman Plants. Ping makes something like 30,000 different crosses every year picks out as many as quarter of a million or more seedlings and from that a very few plants make it to the trialing stage. Then when we get them here in the nursery we put them through the mill and out of that we pick just a few and this is one that falls within this range that I'm excited to tell you about today. Let me show you first of all here's one that only grows about three to four foot high. It's got this rich glow glossy foliage. It's very free flowering and then when it starts to flower look at these exquisite flower buds that just come out with this yellow color with a reddish tip to the petals. Then as they go through in the open you'll see that it starts to take on more of a pink coloration to the flowers altogether making a round compact plant that keeps on flowering and flushes through the season from now early summer right through to the frost of the autumn. And like I said earlier when we've been testing them this is another one that has really performed very well in what we call our no spray trials. That's where we put them out without any spray and any fungicide on them to see how they stand up to our local conditions and I'm delighted to say that this this one has been performing very well for us here. So short and compact, very free flowering, really good disease resistance. It's an excellent variety that would grow well in any sunny, well-drained position in your garden. You could, of course, use this as a single specimen, but when you see them here, and there's just a few plants on the end of this wagon, you can see the flower power that they give when you put them in together and put them in a mass display. And then imagine what you could do if you were to take this and put it into a container and set it on your deck or patio or balcony or anywhere where you're going to be able to enjoy the flowers. There is a little bit of fragrance but it's quite mild but it's nevertheless it's there but it's really these large multicolored very free flowering flowers and blooms that really make this variety stand out. This is Rose True Bloom True Sincerity.